Hi, this is Bob, and I'm working on a Heathkit SS9000 here. I was real happy to get this uh, SS9000. It was in a box of parts, a whole bunch of parts I got in a, in a trade deal. And uh, it sat in my uh, basement here, along with a bunch of other things, boxes of parts. And I got in there, I hope you can see what's going on here. I think my arm was in the way there for a while. But uh, I got in there, and... Uh, and I found that this was in there, and this is Heath Kit serial number one. This is the one that I built in 1981 in the engineering department at Heath Kit. That'll sit there like that, all right. Now I wanted to show you a couple modifications that I think are worthwhile making. The first one here is to extend the CW dropout time and I'm going to get in there nice and close there we are you see I put a ground lug right there on that 632 bolt that came through there was enough room to put another nut so I put a ground lug and I put a small capacitor and a capacitor of uh, I think 2.2 .2 microfarads is plenty and then it comes over and you see this first little diode right here the positive wire just wraps on that first little diode I just made a little tiny u-shaped wrap and closed it with my long nose pliers and just soldered it on there then soldered the ground side to here and what that does is that increases your hang time on CW so that the CW, so when you're going, when you're working CW, the relay is not clack, 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 all the time, every time you push the key. It'll stay in, transmit, longer, so that you can do that. And you can adjust that, of course, with your CW, VOX, VO, it's also the VOX control on the front panel. So it makes it really nice to have that, because I work quite a bit of CW, and I really like that. So like I say again, little ground lug here, extra nut to hold it on, and I ground the ground of this little capacitor, 2.2 .2 microfarads, and I've got a little piece of insulation sleeving on there, and a little tiny hook goes to the end of that diode right there. And that extends your hang time on CW. That's a nice modification. The second one I think is really worthwhile, I wanted to show you, it's this wire right here, and this modification is not done on this rig yet, but I've got it marked here with a little tag. And it's the yellow white wire. And you'll see here it is, uh, uh, let's see here now. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is number seven. I thought it was eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it is number eight. This is number one here. I'm not showing it very well. This is number one here, and this is number eight. So you remove number eight from this uh, socket carrier here, this Molex carrier, and that is uh, that will then give you RIT tuning or tuning shift tuning for transmit and receive and to remove that you come in on those little slots and you push in on those little slots of the connector to remove that and then just wrap it with tape or a little bit of heat shrink and you're done that's a good mod there so then when you're working with somebody you see this rig tunes in 100 hertz steps and you can then adjust in between the steps using the RIT control, which then is effective on transmit as well as receive. So I think that's a nice mod, but I have not done it on this particular radio. But I did put a tag on here to mark it so I could show you. Okay, now my third little modification that I think is really good is removing this IF filter here. The SS9000 has got two IF filters, one after the other in the, in the IF strip. 
and if you uh, have worked with Heath kits you know that the HW101 has got one IF filter the SB104 has one IF filter all of the Heath kit transmitting and receiving equipment that is single sideband uh, made before this SS9000 had one filter and they had really good audio well, what happens with these is if this filter it, it's got several crystals in it it's, it's you have four crystals in there I believe maybe six uh, but if any of those crystals shift a little bit in frequency and they do then what happens is you get poor audio so I have found that by removing this one here and working with just the one filter the same as they do in the HW 101 so you got you got plenty of filtering there and this just slipped down on me that's alright you can take that one out alright what happens you just you only got two connections there to unsolder you take the two little bolts out on this side of the board right here you take these two little bolts out the one here and one here and then you just put a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor in there here's the capacitor I've got a couple pieces of of uh, tubing on there that came off old wire and I just soldered that end there and this end here where the filter was soldered you can see this is where the where the nuts were the uh, four, 440 uh, quarter inch nuts that held the filter in so I keep the old filter of course because I may need it in the future but uh, after I did this uh, the guys that I talked to in the morning we've got a group that gets on 80 meters every day in the Great Lakes area on a frequency of 3846.5 and you're certainly welcome to join us anyhow uh, they have told me that this thing sounds really good and I got bad reports before and that's because of those crazy filters when those crystals age so going to one crystal filter gives you much better audio and it still has the other filter in it's right here see here's the nuts for it for the crystal filter right there 